Welcome back to Raw Politics. Now, Bulgarian authorities are investigating the rape and murder of an investigative reporter. 30-year-old Victoria Marinova is the third journalist to have been killed in the EU this year. Well, Alex, in our social media news desk, The Cube has the latest on this story. Alex? Tessa, this is uh, Victoria Marinova. She was, as you say, a Bulgarian television uh, investigative journalist. She'd just relaunched a new current affairs program called Detector. And on Saturday, she was found after she'd been raped, beaten and suffocated. Her body was found in a public park in her hometown of uh, Rus, you can see here, uh, in Bulgaria. Now, the interior minister who's gone to Rus to take over the investigation said there was no indication of a link between the work Victoria was doing and this killing. But on her very last programme, the very last edition she hosted of Detector, her investigative show, she featured journalists from investigative websites, including Bivol here, and they are looking into an alleged corruption case involving EU funds. And in fact, they have transcribed her last words on air in English. And in this, she promises that she will continue the work of investigating this case. She will continue airing the story. In less than a week, she's dead. Now, for many people, they are drawing a link and saying that this cannot simply be explained away as having no connection to her work. And a lot of journalists are speaking up on this point. In fact, Bivol, that organisation, saying that she was the only one brave enough to feature their work on air. And they are making demands, demands of police protection for Victoria's colleagues, an independent investigation by the European Union, prosecutors from the EU. And those are strong uh, demands. Let's not forget, let me show you the faces of these now three journalists killed in the European Union in the last year. And I think let's just uh, remind ourselves of them. We start obviously with uh, Victoria, but then we have Daphne here, who was killed by a bomb in Malta. And finally, there was a journalist as well uh, killed earlier in the year as well. So there's a lot of points. People are drawing comparisons between these three and saying things have to change. And I want to just end, if I might, on the thoughts of Daphne's son, the journalist we saw there killed in Malta. He saying here, pointing out, uh, tweeting about this latest killing of Victoria, uh, that Unless this issue is addressed, he says, there is a rot that is going to the heart of Europe. He says European institutions must investigate what is going on in member states that this can be happening. So it is a very deeply distressing story. It has sent shockwaves through the journalistic community. And many people believe that by speaking out, Victoria put herself in the sights of uh, some very dangerous individuals. And uh, she is now dead. Tessa. All right. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Alex and the Cube team. And joining me in the studio for more on this, we have the Telegraph's Brussels correspondent, James Crisp, Maltese uh, MEP with the EPP group, Roberta Metzola, and Ernest Sagaga from the International Federation of Journalists. Um, Ernest, I'll start with you. So, Victoria is the third journalist uh, murdered in the EU this year. I mean, yes, they're investigating her death, but some people are making that link. Is this a trend uh, that, that, that you're, we are seeing in the EU? How, how worried are you? Yes, there is a trend which is now really being confirmed. We had Daphne in Malta, we had the Jan in uh, Slovakia, we even have Kim War in Denmark, and now Victoria. And if you cut across to those cases, all these are investigative journalism, the journalists who are being targeted for their work. So unfortunately, we, we are look, witnessing an assault on uh, investigative journalism, and we are also seeing uh, governments dragging their feet when it comes to investigating these crimes. I think, well, just to bring up uh, Kim, I mean, Kim Wall, I think that was, uh, we can say, different uh, circumstances, but indeed, uh, Slovakia, uh, Bulgaria, and uh, Malta, we are seeing that. Roberta, what kind of conversation is happening on a political level? Well, it's obviously growing in terms of concern. Uh, and this week is when we are refocusing on the issue, not only because of uh, the murder in, ba in Bulgaria of the, of the journalists, but also because it's one year since Daphne was assassinated next Tuesday. And in fact, today, um, uh, I would like to shout out the so-called Daphne Project, whereby journalists wanted to send a message that if you kill the messenger, the message is not killed. And us as politicians, I think we have a responsibility to make sure that we put in, into place legislation, but also make sure that we do not fuel uh, hatred towards those who have a duty to criticize us. And unfortunately, I come from a country where it's almost normal to actually attack journalists for doing one thing, after all, trying to seek the truth and doing everything to make sure that that truth comes out. What happened last year and this past year in Europe has shown us that that job is no longer secure. Some, we have failed these persons whose job it is 
to society is to out with the truth. And that is where we have failed. All right. So you're saying that in Malta, you do confirm that there is an environment where journalists do feel threatened well, and are threatened. Well, if you ask journalists in Malta, they will tell you that they, will, they are not able to do the job they do unless they actually um, praise the politicians, right? Mm -hmm. The minute you start to investigate, I mean, we have seen uh, a memorial, a makeshift memorial that has been uh, built up uh, for, for, for Daphne opposite the law courts. Over 20 times, government workers have been sent to remove it. Mm -hmm. at night, in hiding, and we have had to go to the street, and we will go to the street again on, on Sunday coming, um, to actually ask for our society, for Malta, that has always, let's say, prized its journalists, but today we haven't, we don't anymore. I mean, James, there's also this broader question of uh, the democratic process, democracy, it, it's beyond journalists' safety here. Yeah, I think, I mean, the thing I find most depressing about this story is I remember, you know, very clearly after the Charlie Hebdo shootings in Paris and I remember being here in Brussels and going to some of the vigils and okay you could say Charlie Hebdo is a satirical magazine but it still felt very much like a publication it still felt very much like it was members of my industry which had been targeted and people were holding their placards saying you know just read Charlie but things have actually got worse uh, since then um, and you know I'm very interested in, in what you were saying Roberta I mean I don't know, it sounds to me from what you're saying that Malta is basically a gangster state. Well, if a journalist is assassinated and it is clear that whoever has commissioned the murder is nowhere close to being found, then I have to worry. Mm -hmm. And that is why in the European Parliament we have set up a cross-party um, group to precisely look into rule of law issues in the European Union. European Union is not only about sure. economic agreements, it is about values which we fought so hard for when we wanted to join. I mean, I, mm. I was part of the campaign for Malta to join the European Union and that was one of the things we, we wanted to make sure that our institutions are, let's say, um, addressed our, 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 our are seen to work as though the rule of law actually functioning. And right. it's, it's a pity that there is a, a monitoring group that is focusing on Slovak and Malta. I wish there wasn't, but unfortunately that's what I it is. I do want to check if we have uh, our Skype guests because um, we do think we have uh, someone else joining us from the Skype. Well, two journalists, one from the investigative news website Bivol, uh, were arrested last month. They were working with Victoria Marinova on a story involving alleged corruption in EU-funded projects in Bulgaria. And joining us uh, live is Bivol's editor, Atanas Chobanov. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Did you know uh, Victoria Marinova? Uh, I don't know her personally. She worked with uh, our journalists. All right. How dangerous is it then, can you tell us, to be a journalist in Bulgaria? Uh, it is very dangerous, especially when you investigate high-profile political corruption. And this is the case with our investigation that uh, Victoria exposed on air. She's, uh, she was uh, extremely brave to speak about this. Have you had threats yourself? We had threats uh, ourselves, we, but we are investigative journalists who are experienced and we manage uh, uh, with the threats. We, we know how to protect us. Uh, the problem here is that the Bulgarian authorities didn't start an investigation even after our journalists were arrested by police because they tried to save from the f destruction evidence about uh, a big uh, uh, a big network of uh, of uh, uh, people who are who are siphoning siphoning uh, european funds uh, so this investigation now is uh, moving to next level but it was only after the killing of uh, victoria made a buzz which is uh, unfortunately uh, uh, not uh, to be the case. So is, it, is this kind of environment something that journalists in Bulgaria kind of just say, okay, it's part of my job, it's part of how Bulgaria is like? Is this something they just have to accept and deal with? We know that uh, investigative journalism is dangerous stuff. We know countries where it's even more dangerous. Uh, uh, and uh, we, are, we are happy that we are working in the European Union, uh, which is a relatively protected environment. But this year, with three killings, uh, it, it, it we are not more confident in, uh, in, uh, in authorities that they can protect us. All right. And very quickly, uh, what needs to be changed uh, for journalists to be protected, do you think? Very quickly. Uh, journalists cannot be protected uh, by, by, by uh, bills 
uh, they must be uh, protected by a general assessment of uh, uh, and uh, and uh, general uh, authorities uh, involvement in investigations and not uh, uh, in our case we are we are alone against the state we are alone against the criminals and uh, we we don't have the support we didn't have the support until recently for our work all right. Thank you very much for joining us today. Atanas Chobanov, you're the editor of Bivol uh, newspaper. Thank you. All right. Uh, Reporters uh, Without Borders releases annual WordPress Freedom Index earlier this year, and it called the situation in Bulgaria difficult. The country also fared worse than any other EU nation, ranking 111th out of 180 <laughs> countries, down two spots from the previous year. And Serbia ranked 76, followed by Hungary and Poland at 73rd and 58th place, respectively. At I want to put uh, to you, the, is there an east-west divide that you're seeing here in Europe uh, with regard to the, you know, the, the, the quality, the rule of law and the, the, the treatment of journalists? Well, I want to caution about uh, east and west because this problem is actually very reminiscent of what is going on in other parts of the world. We have many countries where many journalists are being killed. The reasons are similar. People who attack journalists, they do so in order to suppress free speech and free press. And the only difference between the other parts of the world and Europe, uh, being European Union and the wider Europe, is that you could actually find uh, a stronger political will in the EU to fight against these kind of crimes and also the ability of their institutions to investigate these crimes. What is happening now in Bulgaria, in Malta, and in Slovakia, there are people who are testing the will, political will, and the ability of the, these institutions to make a difference. That's mm. why we need to take very careful, uh, very seriously these cases. It's not about right. West and East, it's about Europe and the rest of the world. All right. And would, so, I mean, say, I mean, one yeah. thing I'd say is as well that people in these governments, uh, you know, they're being given a green card, the green light to go ahead with this sort of stuff from Donald Trump. You know, the most powerful man in the world stands up mocks journalists, he calls them any enemy of the people, that sets an example. I mean, there's an argument to be had about how much power the EU actually has to safeguard these freedoms, you know, these rights. I mean, personally, I would feel more comfortable if each country safeguarded their own rights. That doesn't look like it's entirely possible at the moment. But the fact is, Trump is making this OK. All right, so this is, so we're, we're seeing an environment around the world, as we're all pointing out. Uh, uh, of, of, uh, as yeah, James yeah. has just said, I mean, this has meant that we, have. that we could, um, we have to set up a rule of law mechanism whereby each member state is analysed and where there are deficiencies, the European Commission can come into act. This is where the European Parliament has actually been at the forefront of protecting journalists. But it, uh, increase in your what you need and, well, and well. The, the government and the ministries and the governments have to actually accept such uh, an initiative from the European Parliament, but we're still seeing very big resistance from the governments on this. This is the problem. Okay. All right. A lot of discussion to be had on that topic, but let's move on for now because there